chiaroscuro. What does this big word mean, and what does it have to do with your artwork this week? Chiaroscuro means light and dark, but we use it to describe artworks that have an uneven amount of both. We're talking about hard edges that define the form, bold spots of black and white, and not gradual blending and shading. Here's an example of something that is chiaroscuro. And here's an example of something that is less chiaroscuro with the same exact subject. Notice how much more blended and smooth the second image is? That makes it less chiaroscuro. This technique began when artists during the 14th century started to add white highlights to their drawings and then go in with very dark shadows to create a dramatic effect. Printing was also a new art form at the time, and it required the image to be high contrast. Nowadays, we have technology that can achieve that gradual shaded look, but in the 1500s, everything had to be printed in strong black and white chiaroscuro. Many artists from the Baroque period would borrow these techniques in their paintings. The best example of this, and the king of chiaroscuro, is the Renaissance artist Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, or better known as just plain Caravaggio. How did Caravaggio make this chiaroscuro technique in his work, and how will you achieve it in yours? This is achieved by making bright marks on a dark surface, or ground, and revealing the important highlighted details of your subject. It can be completed with many different mediums. This work, by the artist Sally Maxwell, was created using scratchboard. This is when an image is lightly carved and scraped onto a surface that has been covered with black ink. Today you'll be working on black paper, but here are other mediums that can encourage this effect. We mentioned printing earlier, and here's a few beautiful examples of chiaroscuro woodcut prints. Another medium that's great for this is black velvet painting. Velvet fabric has a texture that keeps light from reflecting off of it, concentrating your eyes on the paint itself. Those are just a few examples. Can you think of more? Good luck on your drawings this week, and have fun making art.